speaking. Good afternoon, everybody. The police escort going past. <laughs> I thought they were escorting them up here to an archaeology talk. Anyway, just a little bit of notice before we kick off. Glyn over here has got some leaflets for the free archaeology talks at Bradford University. So see, Glyn, if you would like one of the, um, one of the leaflets. Isn't it wonderful to be able to come to a record cafe and not have to step over uh, various obstacles to get in through the door? So it's been well worth nine months of disruption, hasn't it? So, uh, anyway. so all we've got to do now is get past Sinq of having 35,000 tins of uh, black bean sauce delivered and the bloke who's always 50 pence short of a six pack of Superstone Polish lager. Um, I did give him 50p last week, but he said, can the pound, mate? There's bloody inflation everywhere. Anyway, enough of the, enough of the comedy stand up routine. It's a great pleasure to introduce one of our, well, one of our regulars at the talks, Chris Gaffney, a good friend of ours, and uh, he, he behaved himself last time, so we thought we'd bring him back. And he's going to talk about archaeology that we did at Bradford Park Avenue in 2015. No, he isn't. Forget that. No. He's going to talk about Boom Crescent. He's nodding. Yes, he is. And there's a little part at the end about Ballet Parade. So with no further ado, I'll pass you to Professor Chris Gaffney. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about uh, recording football grounds as heritage assets. Uh, essentially, that just is really about, about what I do in my spare time, I suppose. Uh, I'm an I am an archaeologist. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about you may not uh, uh, sort of like understand or, or perhaps um, see as archaeology, because um, mostly, obviously, archaeology is about, uh, about finding things underneath the ground. Mostly today, I'm going to talk about um, recording things that are standing above, above ground. And I'm going to explain why it's important that we that we do this. Um, the one, oh, well, that's interesting. Oh yes, there we are. Um, you, you might you might be aware that um, that the financial risk for smaller clubs is enormous these days. And there was this uh, report um, on non-league football su suggesting that eight thousand clubs were actually at risk of closure. Now, obviously, that's a massive amount of our heritage that potentially could just be wiped out effectively overnight. Now, here's a, a case in point. This is, this is the, uh, the home of the mighty magpies, Maidenhead United, not the mightiest magpie. <laughs> not that we'll come to them later. But you can see here that the issues. Gone over here, this is the, uh, the map of uh, Maidenhead in... Um, about uh, 1900 or so, and you can see dominated by by the Great Western Railway, and this is the the uh, the aerial photograph now, and we can see the cricket ground here turns into the football ground, Maidenhead's football ground, and uh, you can see the infill around it. That bit of ground is, of course, worth millions and millions of pounds. Okay, there's real pressure on them to move. And they are currently talking about moving down here. Why is that important? Does anybody know anything about why, why that's important? Maidenhead football ground? Well, the reason, there's, Maiden, there's some information about, about Maidenhead. Uh, cre created uh, 1870. <laughs> Will you come up here and do this? 1871, they moved to this ground. This ground is the oldest surviving uh, uh, football ground in the world with the same uh, club playing week in, week out since 1871. They played Marlow uh, on here at the very, in the inaugural FA Cup. Okay, that was a really important ground. We cannot get, we cannot lose heritage like that. There's also other things which are really pushing the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the problem uh, uh, in our face again. Here's uh, Extinction Rebellion's report, which suggests that um, uh, uh, a quarter of English football stadiums could be unplayable by 2050 uh, due to climate change. Um, there's some strange old places on there. 
misspelling of Middlesbrough, but you know, but that's okay. I'm a bit of a grammar uh, uh, addict here. You'll find this out. Now then, York. Okay, here we are. We're in York, and we're going to see uh, the majority of what I'm going to talk about will will be about the present. We can see the 1900 plan of York here. And on the, on the right hand side, we've got the modern, the modern aerial photograph. And surprisingly enough, 1900, there's a cricket ground. By, by um, uh, 1932, we've got the football ground. Okay, so it says Bootham Crescent. It's um, again, right in the central part of, um, of the city, and it's really under pressure. In, in, it's been under pressure for a number of years. They wanted to move out of the of the uh, of the city. They start off um, in in uh, in Fulford, to the south of the city. They're in the Boom Crescent, right in the central part. Great location for uh, for the train station again. And they recently moved out to the community uh, ground, which is north of um, of, uh, of, uh, of York. And presumably by about 2050, they'll be in Pickering. The, the ground itself, well, I should, I should, um, should say that um, the, the, the chap that um, Dave and I worked with at, um, at, uh, at Bradford Park Avenue uh, was Jason Wood. And Jason uh, rang me up and said, there's a, there's a, you, sh you should come to Bootham Crescent. I said, well, I've never been. What, what, what's the deal? He says, it's the tunnel. I said, Jason. Jason, I'm an archaeologist. You're an archaeologist. Every single time, I get a, I get a phone call from somebody, and they say, "There's a tunnel at this site. It goes from my house to the church, and there's never a, a tunnel. There's never a tunnel." So, but in fact, tunnels are, are interesting spaces that's because last time I was here, I talked a lot about uh, topophilia. The love of, of place. Tunnels are about are about topophobia. Okay? They put the fear of what's it up here. Right? They are there to be to really make you worried when you are the visiting people. Anfield. And on the left hand side of the door it says Bill Shank Lisa uh, quote, it's there to remind our lads who they're playing for and to remind the opposition who they're playing against, right? Tunnels are, are really important spaces. Millwall, the den. And over the top, it just simply says, this is the lion's den. And I have this, this vision, right? Gaza, Paul Gascoigne, walking out there, he looks up, looks at that, turns to Vinnie Jones and says, Vinnie, I know I'm as daft as a brush, but do you think there's an apostrophe missing in lines then? Because, <laughs> to be really honest, it might have explained Vinnie's reaction 20 minutes later. <laughs> now this is, this is the, the Booth and Crescent uh, uh, tunnel as you come out of, from the dressing rooms. There's nothing frightening about this. But, the story is actually about the popular stand opposite, which we're looking out at. Because actually, uh, well, let's, let's just have a look, a look at Bootham, Bootham Crescent. Um, it's 1932, they, they arrive, um, they share the ground with, uh, with, a, with a rugby league team for four years towards the end, okay? The, to orientate ourselves, We've got the uh, we've got our, our popular stand, which we were looking at there. The main stand, David Lawrence, and the Grove and the Road uh, East stand. And if we look at it, it's like um, it's like uh, like any stand that you, that you can imagine. The popular stand. It's got this really crap seating in that we that we put up with. It's got um, it's got mesh to to stop people moving around and uh, chucking stuff. But it does have a tunnel. It does genuinely have a tunnel. It's 
but it's not below the ground, it's beneath the stand. Okay, the stand is built up, but there's a tunnel running the complete length. You can see some, uh, some views of the, the tunnel here. Quite clear, quite clean, a bit of light in it. It has a, an, an exit halfway through, uh, but this is, is, is normally closed. Now, here we are, we're, 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 we're back at St. James's Park, right? We're not back, we're at St. James's Park, 1970s. This was, um, this was, the reason why I'm putting this up is because I'm explaining what that tunnel's about. This was the, what St. James's Park looked like when I first went there. And it's, um, and it's a typical Archibald Leach football ground. It has three open stands and an, and a, and an area of seating, okay? That's, that was the plan. He sold that plan everywhere. The thing is that it, it reserved matches. You could stand at the Gallagher end watching the lads play towards that, that end. And then what you could do is you could walk along the popular side here to the Leasers end and, and watch the goals going in in the second half, right? So you could swap uh, ends of the ground. Yes, Tom, who's, uh, who's, the, uh, who's, who's my uh, uh, colleague helping here. And, uh, and Tom's in the tunnel. Can you see, you, you, you can't see at the back. I'll tell you what's written. There's some graffiti here. First one, <coughs> that above Tom's head, Tom's head says York. Second beam says Bradford. The third beam, Avenue. The reason why that tunnel was stopped in the 19, from being used in the 1970s is because the rival fans used to swap ends. The 1970s, as we all know, was a bit of a problem time in football. This, is, this tunnel was there to allow people to, to move around this, the, uh, the, uh, the ground, but ultimately the number of fights that happened in the early 70s meant that it got closed down. Okay? So, but it's unique, as far as I know, it's a unique element in the, uh, in the, the football world. And we, we've surveyed this using uh, some technology, it's called um, uh, Geoslam technology, and, uh, and we'll see some examples of what we did with it. Here's one. This is the, this is the, the, uh, the popular uh, stand. And what we can see is here is we've, uh, we've, uh, we've measured this in very, very um, high precision. And we've, uh, we basically create three-dimensional uh, models. And you can see the, the, stand, the stand. And you can see the entrance to the, the tunnel here. And there's a section through that we've cut through the data. So it's like, a, it's like an architectural drawing. You can see the way it moved, the, 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 uh, the, the, the seating is in place here and the, the tunnel itself. That's okay. We, we, we collected the data. We found, we found and recorded the tunnel. What about the rest of the, the ground? Because the ground is interesting. It really is. It feels like a 1932 ground. Okay? It's, there's lots of concrete. There's, there's the toilets. The toilets. Has anybody been in these toilets? Well, you've missed your chance if you haven't been in. They are probably, probably the worst toilets in any, or were the worst toilets in any football ground. Okay, they really are quite terrible. Bizarrely, there's a bit of graffiti on the wall. This is true. Tune on the peeve. That's, that was actually plastered on the wall. I have no idea why it was there. I don't know what it means. Okay. <laughs> but the toilets were, were part of the uh, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 ambience of the ground that we that we had to capture. It's uh, the, it was towards the end. We can see that the part that we. Whoops. We have some reviews from the uh, of the of the uh, ground, which 
we've got a, a nice little ground, not as decrepit as I was expecting, <laughs> shocking, not what I would consider football league standard. Uh, there's also one stewards slash police are too strict. That's from a Wrexham fan who signs himself Sheep Shagger 98. <laughs> Frankly, I don't think the police could be too strict with that uh, chap, to be honest. But, but there were elements of, of the ground, that, as we came and, and, and looked at the ground, that were absolutely beautiful. Okay? This is the away uh, director's area. This is the press. This is where the press uh, sat. There's an ISDN box there. Um, don't think it was working, but um, you never know. And the the seats, the seats were in the in the main stand were wooden and absolutely lovely, lovely items. Um, there was the usual stuff as we moved through the the time when we were recording because we were recording. Um, we started at the end of 2019, and of course we ran into COVID. And we can see the, 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 the dugout, we can see the fact that the ground's beginning to decay. Okay, they, they're still playing games, but it's, but it's beginning to decay. Inside, there's um, the memorabilia that, um, that, 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 we, uh, that, we, um, that we recorded, including the, you know, the, the, the signs of the, the city, HMS, York uh, hats, we've got the, the dining areas and so on. Uh, also, I did notice a semi-final uh, program I had up on the wall, um, uh, Hillsborough uh, semi-final, uh, 1955. It was a good year, 1955, because York City did not win that semi-final. Uh, into the into the, uh, the, 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 the dressing rooms underneath the, uh, underneath the, uh, the, the main stand. Uh, they're quite utilitarian, I think it's fair to say. Uh, there's, some interesting, there's some interesting graffiti. Um, we, we, we weren't allowed initially into the, the, uh, the, the, the home dressing room. They wouldn't allow us in because there was too many secrets in there, apparently. Um, but, we, but we did get into the... Uh, the, uh, the visitors' dressing room, and you can see it's it's um, very I'm going to say old-fashioned. There were like communal baths, small ones, very very cozy, um, but uh, but but apparently they haven't been used for some time. There was the, uh, the there was the team strategy board, um, blank, uh, and, we, and we got in we got into the we got into eventually we got into the uh, the managers. Um, uh, uh, room. We, initially, we weren't allowed in, but we did get in. And what we found there was um, was a bag of balls, which was pretty pretty useful. There was also there was also the Geordie thermometer. There's a bit of a theme coming through here, and um, it goes. It, it starts off, you know, whatever, ends up at um, hell freezing over, and, and the and the Geordie thermometer is Sunderland wins the cup. Right, okay, it's so that, that sort of thing. And, but of course, the reason for that was because their manager was Steve Watson, uh, formerly of, of, uh, of, of the tune, and, um, and he was, um, not long after we finished recording here, he was, he was sacked. Uh, he was sacked um, with a 51% win rate. I think, I, I think that's pretty tough on him, isn't it? I think that's definitely tough. Let's see this. Um, what we're going to do is, we, we, we're just seeing Tom's, um, he's, he's, this is a 360 degree um, video, which, were, which basically means that we could stop it and turn it around and, and look at, look at the, the different views as you come through the, uh, the area. You can see the, uh, the, there's a little device turning around, that's the laser scanner, so he's collecting, he's collecting data in three dimensions so we can create an exact replica of the of the of the area that he's walking through obviously going through towards the um towards the uh the the away dressing room um, it's very exciting very exciting going into into the dressing rooms as you can see 
Um, they are, you know, they're really they are utilitarian. Um, you know, we're we're not talking about the uh, the superstars of um, of, uh, of the football world, and um, and you can just imagine uh, the the fun that could be had in this windless room uh, when you come back uh, having been beaten for nothing. There's somewhere you could be, uh, they could do massages on, and uh, oh my god, we're about to go, he's about to go into the loose again. Oh, okay, we'll move on that, we'll move on. So, so we've recorded inside. Now, now COVID came, and we, we, we managed to, to do little bit, bits and pieces. But we said, you know what, we're going to create this model, huge, huge model of, of, the, of, the, um, of the football stadium, but we want to put some atmosphere in it. We want to go to a match. And of course, at, uh, during COVID, you, you couldn't go unless you had a, a real reason to be there. And there was no fans allowed in. But, um, but we, managed to, um, we managed to persuade the club that, that, that we were essential workers and they allowed us in. So we went to, um, to, uh, with, with various bits of um, uh, equipment um, to the York City versus Chorley games. These are the last games that they played before they, before they left um, Bootham Crescent. The, blue, the, the green ones are where they won. Uh, the, the, the beige ones are, are, uh, are draws, and the red ones are, are, um, are, are losses. The final one was uh, they, they lost 4-2 they lost to Bradford Park Avenue. Okay? We were at top one, York City versus Chorley, 3-1 to York. Canny game, I've got to say, a really good game. Um, but of course, you, you, they somehow had to get some atmosphere in there. So we were in the popular, we're looking over towards the, the Pullman side, and, um, and you can see here that they've, uh, they've got the atmosphere by, by putting all these fake people in the seats, okay? There, there is somebody there, I don't know how he got in. But, you know. but, but here's, here's some, we're capturing some atmosphere from here. The, you know, the place was beginning to crumble, okay? Nobody had been in that ground for a year, and it was re it really showed. Got some lovely imagery of the the Minster men. You've got the popular stand, transfer seating only a pound. We can see the you know the fact that it's just beginning to become very gloomy, and um, and you can see goalposts just popped up in the back with the with the with the weeds growing over them and so on. Very atmospheric. Yes, Tom again. Um, he's fixing um, a, a, a 3D surround microphone there. And notice he's wearing a, a, a mask. He had to wear a mask because um, even though it, it was only him and, and, and me in that, in, that um, uh, in, in the popular end there, actually it was the law. We actually had to wear masks whilst we were there. And so we watched the game. Okay, it was a good game, no doubt about it. Uh, we don't think we're going to, sadly we're not going to get um, much of the noise there. But the, the, the big thing about this was we, we collected really good qu quality um, video. This isn't one of them, but never mind. Um, and we, we, we collected sound for the whole match. And I can, I can now officially tell everyone, we managed to get 10 seconds without anybody bloody swearing. <laughs> it's astonishing. We're going to use that 10 seconds. Now, okay, right, here I am. Um, we, we went, we, we, the, the, the next uh, phase was, um, uh, was, was the unexpected um, uh, uh, discussions that we had where so, when we were told, well, uh, yeah, we're, we've, we're going to sell the, uh, the land to Persimmons. We've just got to get rid of the bodies. What, what? what do you mean? What do you mean? And they said, well, well, looks like they've been, they've been burying caskets. And we said, oh, right, okay, where? And you can see, uh, hopefully, is that thing still going? I don't know that. Is that am I still going there? Let's see. There was, there was, there was me going up and down with, with the GPR. 
Um, I'm glad to see Mike has, has arrived because Mike uh, is a colleague of mine who's, uh, who, who, who was with us to collect the data. And the idea was that we would, we would concentrate on the areas where there might be burials and see if, oh, there I go again. It's, a bit, it's very exciting when I'm walking backwards and forwards, but we'll, but we'll give it a miss there. We can see the ground and the areas where, where it's important here is, is the, the, the popular uh, stand by the, um, by the, the, the centre line behind the goal over here, right? So, what, what you're going to see here is, is, right, that, that, that is a, a cube, what we call a cube of, of ground penetrating radar data. That's the, that's the, um, the, the cinder uh, area. We have, um, we've got a pipeline coming through. What we saw We'll get down to the bottom, we'll start seeing that there are some, some things off the, the alignment, that's the drainage. We have a huge number of really rather bizarre lines. Now these lines we'd seen at Bradford Park Avenue, okay? They, these, this is due to liming. What happens is the lime goes in, into the topsoil, it's hydrophilic, it pulls water towards it, and therefore it, it gives a geophysical sig signal. Now, it's a bit odd. There weren't, now, we, we thought we could see some, some burials, and we couldn't, right? It, it, that, that's a long story, and, um, and Mike's at the back, and you can ask him why not. He's the expert in this one, is, is what I'm saying. I'm always going to pass that book. Come on. Right. Now, okay, w w what were the other lines about? Well, remember I said they'd, spe they'd spent uh, four years with the rugby league team playing there. Of course, they have slightly different markings. You, you, you could see, if you were literally standing where I am, you could see that there's the, the, they use the, um, the, 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 um, the, um, the corner um, of, the, of the football field exactly as, as, as it is in, in for the football, but then you've got different markings as you go through. And in fact, if we look at this as a, as a, as a, a perhaps a, uh, a, an example which is a very extreme, this comes from Vancouver, but you can see the way in which lots and lots of different uh, fo football, rugby, um, in this case hockey and so on, is, is, uh, is actually all captured in the, the, the field of play. So basically what we're seeing there is, is not just one uh, pitch, but many pitches uh, for, for different uh, uses in the data set. We did the we did the um, the area around the goal as well, and just for for to get an idea, this is, you can see the areas of uh, of uh, of real compaction here. I've, I've put on the goal posts and the and the uh, and the six yard area, and you can see the areas that, that are really compacted in in this. And these are tend to be the areas of the goal area. What I'm what we're going to look at here is this is very very close to the surface. And this is getting deeper and deeper, and you can see the the the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the markings coming through here. And as we get deeper, we can see the compaction because basically that's indicating the uh, the way in which the, uh, the the ground is being repaired because of all the, the the goal line action. And then when we come to the deeper part again, we can see the the, the drain. Tom, we spent. Um, uh, a really nice day, not finding any bodies, but doing really well at finding former pitches and drainage. You know, to be honest, that's my life. It's not, it's not the end of the world. But, um, but, they, but they, did, they did do an excavation and they found the caskets, okay? And that, that excavation I put up there, but the, the reason why I put it up here is just to show the correlation, at least now I'm up here, I can see it, the correlation between the the, uh, the GPR and the uh, and the excavation itself. Okay, so the 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 ground, of course, um, you can see is has we're we're looking at the the position the so the state of the ground very late on. This is um, uh, 2002, and you can see that this. 
for the area. This was the area of the excavation, and another one the excavation next to the main stand. What you, what you can see though is that is, and it's a, yeah. what you can see is that this, the the um, the seating's been stripped away. Okay, so the, 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 they sell off all of the assets. Okay, the, 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 you could go online. The urinal. Somebody bought the bloomin' urinals. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> apparently it's in his garden who bought it. Apparently you can nip out and have a pee in the fresh air, just like the old days. The turnstiles. They sold the turnstiles. Okay? And it's really interesting. There's an article uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Guardian that um, by the guy who bought one, and, and he transported it up to, uh, to his house in, uh, in Scotland. And uh, I think it cost them more in tra to transport it than, than buying it. He spent 350 quid on buying it. And he says he loved it because it, it, was, it, had the, um, it, it had the form of an art deco um, piece to it. And he said it was cheap because the other ones which were a hundred quid more, were Victorian. Victorian? This ground was built in 1932. That's because they brought a lot of the, the, um, the, the, the uh, original ground from Fulford, brought it up and used it again at the, at the, um, at the, at the ground. So basically, they really did Re, uh, reuse things and uh, and uh, and basically the ground itself had simply sort of like been brought and encapsulated into the the, the booth of Crescent and of course the grounds itself are really important um, because if we think about about uh, another ground uh, Arsenal you, do, do we know about uh, Dial Dials what what is it called Dial Square somebody knows about Dial Square right great Dial Square they're the, the, the supporters who are really cheesed off with the with the with Arsenal because it's become so monetary or uh, focused, and so they've they've created their own club. Now they could have called it Woolwich Arsenal or anything like that because they had about four names beforehand, you know. And they they chose to call the to the uh, the team after their original football ground, not after previous names. That's why grounds are really important. They stay with you, and they stayed with us here at, uh, at Bootham Crescent. However, they sold they sold the bits off, and they did, they haven't taken them to uh, to the community ground. Even even the goalposts, goalposts have been bought. I mean, who'd be mad enough to buy goalposts? Who would be mad enough? My God, it's Nick Pope, Newcastle United goalkeeper. There is definitely a theme in here. Pope, Pope has spent a year at York City and loved it so much that basically bought, uh, bought the posts and, uh, and put them up in his garden. I don't think he, is, I don't think he bought the urinal. <laughs> so anyway, the, the ground, this is sold you know, about six months ago, sold to uh, Persimmons, seven million quid. That's going to get. Um, that's going to buy in Nick Pope's left leg. Um, so, but I'm sure that would be a, a good, wise investment. But you know, it's 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 no more. It, it's genuinely genuinely no more. In fact, if you go onto Google now, this is uh, this almost brought tears to my eyes. It simply says, "Site of Bootham Crescent, former York City ground." Honestly, if that if that's not enough to to just get a little tear in your eye, I don't know what it is. And it's just, it just looks like a complete mess. There's gonna be 92 houses on there, apparently. No, this isn't a new thing. You know, they've been, they've been talking about this for 20 years. And you can see this layout here, that, that this is how it's progressed, and this is where we are now. The interesting thing is, because of the, the influence of Jason Wood, is that um, they're gonna preserve the, the center circle. They're going to preserve some of the popular stand, which is the one with the tunnel, okay? 
end up in either memorial ground and some of those caskets will be reinterred back on the, on the former ground again. So if, that, if you didn't cry at the prospect of the ground going down, please, you know, that's, that's a heartwarming story. But the thing is, the thing is, the ground's still there. You know, the, the ground is there. Let me just, you know, this is, but, you know, this is a, an, an awful photo of the frontage of the ground. We can never, we, 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 can't, we can't record the, the, really the beauty of the ground in totality. But we have got the ground. We have a, a complete, um, a complete uh, three-dimensional uh, uh, record of that ground. And we can recreate it in some way. It won't be as beautiful as the, as the ground really was, but, but we can do something there. And what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we've, we've, uh, we've given them uh, ideas on on how they could um, they could uh, 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 keep part of the, the stand. So this is this is from our data. So that uh, we we basically got the tunnel through here, and so that there will be a memorial which will be part of the the popular stand in place. Okay, and uh, and that that's great. Really really like that, and it's lovely to be part of our project. But the other thing is. What else could we do? Well, what we're going to do is this is a th this is 360 from the centre spot. We're going to we're going to create an augmented reality um, app, and what you'll be able to do is you will be able to wander into the into the uh, the Bootham Crescent area, go to the the, the, the centre spot, pull up your, your your camera, and revisit the ground again. Okay, it's not it's not going to go away totally. You know, the, the, the guys who, who, who've actually kept the, the physical uh, footprint there have done a really good job. And so, you know, wh when, the, when the houses go up, there will, be, there will be a feeling that there is something left of Booth and Crescent, and, and, and it won't be completely lost. Not like Ayrson Park, you know, I'm just trying to think, I'm, I'm, good, I'm trying to think of all the really great, great football clubs, and I can only think of Roka Park, and that's just not good. <laughs> coming out well for me. But you know, you, you, you think of the, of the grounds that we've lost. And there we are. Um, that's a, a, that's the, the new ground. Um, uh, that, oh, that was the artist impression. Name on there. Has anybody been to the, the new ground yet? Yes, I know, that's your photograph, Bella. I know. Um, was, was it a better experience? No, okay, no, that's fine. Okay, we'll move on from that one then. Um, so, in effect, that is the story of, of, of what we've done at, at Booth and Crescent. It's, it's, it was done over, over about two years. Um, inevitably, we're still not finished, but, we'll, but, but we, 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 we have um, we've created a whole set of assets that will at least be dedicated to the memory of that of that area of that club and you know and I think that's really important uh, when when we move away from from spaces and as we know this is going to happen more frequently you know the, the, the next big one will be will be evidence ground you know that's going to go uh, and you know the, it's, and it just shows that uh, it just illustrates that actually it, it's not just the small clubs but it's the, the large clubs as well um, I just I would say that I would spend a, a minute just mentioning um, the University of Bradford Stadium. I'm on message. I'm on message. Okay, right. Um, I know it's Valley Parade, uh, and you know, and I, you know, having 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 been a supporter of Newcastle all my life, you know, I, I could never call it anything other than St James's Park, especially when the previous regime was in place. But University of Bradford Stadium, and, and we're, we're about to do, we're about to do um, some work um, at, at the stadium. Uh, in part, we'd, we'd spend a bit, a bit of time trying to record the stadium uh, initially. We got part way through it. This was before COVID. We're going to go back and, and finish that. Now, the question is, well, <clears throat> why do this? Okay, it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's an upstanding ground, and 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 
that there's, there, there may not be the, the, the pressure on this ground. If we think, if we go back to, to Bradford Park Avenue, which, um, which I spoke about the last time I was here, that was a completely flattened ground. There's nothing left, okay? And it, it, the archaeological investigation of a site like that is really obvious. <clears throat> Recording uh, Bruton Crescent as a heritage um, asset that's about to be lost is obvious as well. So, but, 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 if, but in terms of a ground like uh, uh, Bally Parade slash University of Bradford Stadium, um, why would we do this? Well, the reason for it is that what we want to do is we, with what I've explained about today is what we call tangible assets. They're the bricks and mortar that makes up the stadium. Okay? But actually there's more to, to the bricks and mortar for the stadium. There's also the stories and the myths that go into the stadium. And what we're intending to do is over the next couple of years is to, is to invite supporters at the match to come and record a minute of reflection about what it's like to be a Bradford City supporter. And, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to create the, an online repository where you'll be able to go into the stadium, click on, on, a, on a seat, and you'll get a story told about Bradford City, okay? So it's about, it's about capturing the spirit of the city that we, that we live in, and, uh, and in particular, capturing the spirit of the, 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 of the supporters of City. Um, nothing, nothing will be um, uh, out of bounds except the 1911 FA Cup final. I can't answer that, and at that point, I'm going to end. Thank you. I can mention the 1911 FA Cup final. Even though my grandfather was a season ticket over at St James's Park, um, but I can say that uh, Bradford City won one nil. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thanks once again. Uh, I did ask him if he found the legendary Holy Well that's under the corner of the field, uh, the Bradford and the Midland Road, but perhaps the next time. Anyway, we're back on the fourth of fourth uh, of March. We've got a chap called Dr David Pendleton. Comes well recommended, apparently. People know I am laughing. Uh, yeah, so I'm giving the talk next time, so that'd be good. Uh, I'm talking about it's called Birds, Booze, and Books, not my description. Rodney Marsh's description of the North American Soccer League, which was unforgettable, that happened in the late 60s, early 70s, and, and into the early 80s, actually. So please come back on the 4th of March, and uh, thanks once again to Chris. And uh, by the way, Glyn's got um, various leaflets for the free talks at the University of Brothers. Thank you, Chris.